Hey guys, it is the Medrose Podcast here again with episode three of our new little podcast series. And you've got me, Denise, or Core Beauty. Shaman from Medrose. <laughs> Hey, and Herman from Medbros, and it looks like hopefully this time we'll not have any technical difficulties. We're going to get everything going right. Yes, so today's podcast is entirely based on student life, student experiences, and we're going to be talking about a variety of topics, starting with dating in medical school, kind of contrasting that to dating in college, what dating in med school is like, because I know so many of you guys have asked that question. And then we're going to transition into what it was like for all three of us to attend UC Berkeley, or the number one public uh, institution. I mean, I don't even know who holds that title. It's always a battle between UCLA and UC Berkeley. But we're going to be talking about those two things. So if you guys are interested in hearing us ramble and have a good time with us, then just keep on listening to the Metros podcast. If you're not, just watch one of my videos. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, let's jump into the first topic now. We, are, are, we, are we starting off with talking about our relationships or relationships in general? Just, I think, so, so many of, I feel like our viewers are interested in dating once they get into med school just because I feel like in college a lot of pre-meds a lot of us are so you know the path is so difficult we're not really focused on dating as much like some for some of us it happens you know just kind of opportunistically and it works out but for a lot of pre-meds they're not really seeking that relationship in college but they kind of almost expect it or hope to get into a relationship in med school so kind of just getting into the difficulties and the challenges of meeting people and stuff. Yeah, I think also it's inherently a different experience. So when you go to college initially, everyone is kind of a blank slate. You don't know what career you're going to. People are all kind of confused. And if dating at that point is just kind of to meet people, to date, to kind of just um, have that human interaction, it becomes a little more like surgical once you get to a graduate field. Um, people, when you go to, to medicine, you're, you're now in a medical school with a set amount of people. Uh, you guys are all busy, so you really are crammed with this group already so you have a already limited to this pool you know what everyone is doing they're all trying to be doctors um and uh it becomes a little more selective it becomes a little more like uh you're looking for somebody rather than just free-flowing in undergrad that's at least how i had experienced it Benith, what are your thoughts on that um i think i agree for the most part i also think it depends on what you're looking for so i think if you're you know, most, I think, women, again, we talked about this in our last podcast, I'm probably <laughs> going to get dragged at some point for putting my personal beliefs out there too much. But I think that most, like, very ambitious women seek ambitious men. And I think, like Herman said, in college, everybody's not really sure what they're doing. Like, you've heard so many people start as pre-med and then, you know, don't end up doing pre-med. Not that there's anything wrong with that at all. And if you don't do pre-med, you know, you're not ambitious. I'm not saying that at all. But you just don't know where people are headed just because they're a specific major versus I think after college, you get a really good idea of what someone's career path's going to be, what trajectory they're heading into. And so that can kind of give you more of an idea of, I don't know, maybe more solidity is that a word? Solid, solidity, solidified. I don't know, yeah. like a better we'll picture, right? Yeah. Of what, what a solidified be picture as yeah. a partner. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I agree. Go ahead, Chum. Oh yeah, I think that comes with its ups and downs. I think in college you have a wider pool of people with mm. a lot more diverse like options, but then when you get to like graduate and people are fixed on what they're doing, like if you're in medical school. Uh, you can date someone else in medical school, whether it's in your um, your year or higher. Uh, that's a common relationship. Or another thing I see is like people dating people from other graduate schools, like law school, for instance. So I think you still have options of different people in different careers. But I find that the relationships are generally following in this more narrow uh, window versus college. It's like the yeah. options are everywhere. Yeah, and of course, going off of completely anecdotal evidence and not any scientific data, which I'm, uh, you know, I'd be 
interested to see if there is any, but I think people look for different things as well. When you're an undergrad, you're looking to have a good time. You're looking to meet people. You're looking to do stuff. I think later on when you get into graduate school, you start pinning it down to, okay, I need to start thinking about what my life in the future is going to be with an individual. Um, you know, some people have goals of settling down and getting a house and having the classic family. Some people are still wanting to, you know, explore the world and all that kind of stuff is going to be a little different than when you are an undergrad versus when you're later on in life, that's going to dictate what partner you end up on. Um, I think dating yeah. it, go ahead, please. I was just going to say in the same breath, I think it also depends where you go. I think certain med schools are in the middle of nowhere and, you know, maybe don't have, like I know Yale has such an integrative, it's like in such a huge campus where you have even undergrad right next to you, you have a nursing college, you have PA mm. school, you have so many different mm, kind of pla where's places to meet people versus in Mayo, Arizona, we kind of just have the school and we're the second class to exist. There's no nursing school next to us. There's no PA school. There's like barely any, maybe some research labs, but that's about it. So you're pretty much limited to like 50 100 people yeah, yeah so, that's what i'm saying i think that's terrible yeah, yeah that makes it actually people you know right now listening are like oh my god <laughs> yeah you're just crazy. so i think that makes it difficult inherently to even get dating going because like think about it if you're put into a a group of people that you're stuck with really for the next two and a half three years some schools longer or shorter depending on their curriculum and you either like these people or you're compatible with somebody in that class or not. And, and if you're not, then dating becomes very difficult. If you are, it's actually one of the easier ways to meet somebody because when you're crammed in this environment, you guys are you know obviously going to meet up with each other. You're going to get to know each other really well and you can get relationships like that. But say you don't vibe with anybody in your program, that's when dating gets difficult for, for medical students or even other kind of professional students where the class size is limited and you're stuck with them. Well, I think also just now transitioning to maybe just like say you do find someone, I think dating in medical school in general is really challenging. I think that it's not as easy as people make it seem. Sometimes people romanticize it like, oh, I met my like partner in med school, then we went to residency, then we are so yeah. successful. And it's just is like this fairy tale that I think a lot of people, which is why a lot of people ask about it because they're like, oh, is that real? Right. And it dating in medical school, if you were in the same like, from what I know, it can get hard at times because, you know, you are, like Herman said, you're crammed, but it's, is that a good thing all the time? You just mm. kind of want your own space. Mm. You're doing everything the same. And with two schedules, medical student schedules, it can definitely get, like, you, you don't have the typical, like, date night or somebody to make you dinner because you're both so crunched with time. You know, like, it might even make it more difficult in a different, like, in another way. Yeah, there can also be the unique challenges as well with having uh, two medical students. First of all, in my class, personally, we had multiple uh, people that kind of did follow that classic story you do hear about. They met in medical school. They matched residency together. They'll probably go on to be doctors together, working very closely with each other, kind of growing together. That does exist out there for sure. We had like four, I think, in my class alone um, that, that kind of had that story. So when that works out, like I said, it's an amazing thing and, and you kind of really don't need to worry about the whole dating scene because you're with somebody that's compatible with your lifestyle that knows you and and um, you can grow with and you're on the same page versus like if you don't have that is, is when things get difficult like I'm saying um, but yeah I just want to point out you do get that sorry but the other thing about being crammed with each other by the way is you get unique problems right uh, if you have uh, two people within the same class doing the same thing maybe they both want to do the same specialty or something like that or or one's doing well on the test or not it, it can get weird as well when you have two individuals uh, in a yeah. very competitive I mean, you have to be very secure and stable individuals yes because not only are you now dealing with the trials and tribulations of med school, you're dealing with them alongside someone you care about, but you're going to compare yourself to inevitably, like it's just human nature. Like, yo, what'd you get on the test? Oh, what did you get on the test? And, right. oh, you got that many pubs? Oh, okay. Like, I only have two. <laughs> like, up with the pubs, you're gonna baby. Like, you're going to be like, oh, I love you. But at the same time, why are you so much more successful than me? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. it comes with its own, like. That's I a think. funny skit when your significant other is a gunner yeah, yeah that's true exactly too. that's exactly like, the point yeah and sometimes you can appreciate your partner i'm sure as a like outside of med school but sometimes like work it's in general not even just in med school i've seen this with so many other relationships you can't tolerate your partner in a workplace setting but you can tolerate them outside the workplace setting mm -hmm. so it's like They're if totally you're gonna different date people. someone yeah 
Exactly. They're totally different people. So if you're going to date someone in med school, you kind of almost have to like both of their personalities, ah, whether it's in the workplace and outside the workplace. Because I know a lot of relationships where people can't stand each other, like in the way they work, or their working <laughs> habits, but they're like, oh, at home, he's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's super interesting. You can do your nine to five day and then they become a different person once you get home. Um, but I've you, heard a lot of people are going, a lot of med students are on certain apps. I was going to bring that up. I was going to bring that up. So, so say you are stuck in a, in a class, like you said, so you don't get the, the beautiful scenario where you immediately find somebody and kind of go through school with them. What do you do then? If you, if you're a professional, you don't have time to go out and meet people. You don't have time to do other stuff and you're stuck you with these people. You can go on Hinge. Is Hinge it's the one? There's, the there's so many. Yeah. Explain. Cause there's so many. So now. I made a Hinge for my friend. Oh. And she didn't want to make it for herself, so I made it for her. And I show I told Shaman this, right? Shaman, you were asking like, "Yo, beneath why are there random dude screenshots here and there?" And I was just like, "Oh, I was sending them to my friend because." Huh. And so there's a bunch of doctors, residents, med students on this app, and she didn't end up with any of them. I don't know. But that's a whole different story, whatever. But. Um, I was just amazed. I was just swiping and there's so many med students, so many doctors on this app. So if you, and I know a lot of people actually, even in my real life who have met like residents and stuff on these apps. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely something worth a try. Yeah. So there's so many. Now I remember when <laughs> initially in college, uh, we, we did me and Shaman one day, we we're just like, what is this Tinder thing? So I made a Tinder and uh, just experimentally, you know what a lot of guys did early on in the day, uh, you just swipe right on everybody just for fun. Um, I think back then there was no limit, right? Cause you so just want to see the Indian response rate is so low on Tinder. <laughs> I, I did not again, nobody knew how the thing worked. Nobody knew how everything was going to go. This was super early on and you just would swipe, right? Cause it would be unlimited and then you'd match the people. And, uh, I remember when I knew that app was not for me was I, it matched with somebody and it was my GSI, my graduate student instructor at Berkeley. Oh my God. And I was like, I got to get off this app. So there were like, it was really awkward. Why would initially. they swipe? Did they know you? Maybe they were doing the same thing. Like I said, back in the day, there was no limit. So well, what you I don't really think do is people, just. People don't meet on Tinder anymore. I don't think Tinder. Oh, no, I think no, it's I think Bumble. initially it wasn't. Yeah. No, I know. But I think Bumble is a new one that I've heard med students meeting people on and Hinge. Those are the two. Oh, is, is Grinder not the one to make long-term relationships anymore? Silence. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the two, um, Bumble and Hinge? Bumble and Hinge, yes. Shaman, what's hmm. your experience with the apps? I have not used those. <laughs> I don't want to use some Bumblebee app <laughs> to find a significant. Shaman would probably well, the question is, here's a question, right? Like, what is the perception now uh, in, in 2020 on these apps, considering that a lot of people are going to have to turn to these apps, especially with the COVID pandemic. All. I think it's not a negative perception at all. I think initially it was, I think initially a lot of people, I know when I was, uh, you know, when I did my little Tinder escapades, people would be like the, the vibe was you don't want to meet somebody online. It's weird. It's foreign. It's not as good connection as running into somebody in real life, but like really what, it, what, what is our perception of it now? You're saying not bad at all. I don't, I don't think, okay. I think it's hard though. It's harder to get mm -hmm. to know somebody. You know, wait, wait, real quick. Why is it that when the Indians do something, it's seen as a cringe train wreck, but when another group does it, it's seen as in. Remember Shadi.com back in the day? That's true. That was made fun of for decades. That's well, Shadi.com had a different story behind it. It was, <laughs> it's a little funny when you have your grandma logging into Shadi.com, making your profile for you, putting your son or daughter's profile on there. Yeah, but a lot of people made their own profiles too. That's true. They did back and they still the do. And, I, and, and they, got again, they got roasted so hard back in the day. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing where this online scene. So yeah, what's honestly, the they're scene? all just you know, like app shadi.com. It's like the yeah. mobile application version, to be honest. Was shadi.com? Yeah, it was before all of these, right? That was Is a Shady. website. Shadi.com even still open? Yeah, of course. I will say, like, generally, if I had to give authentic advice, it is hard to meet people in medical mm -hmm. school. Because regardless even of where you meet them, when the hell are you going to have time? Like, you have two days, maybe, on, like, especially, like, with third year right now, like, maybe one day and I don't really want to spend it like with random people. <laughs>
Yeah, I do wonder what average age of doctors that are getting married these days are. I would imagine it would be higher. Um, just yeah, you know, definitely it's higher. Yeah, because the thing is, like like you said everything kind of just gets delayed when you take the medicine route. Uh, I know we're talking about relationships in general, but when you take the medicine route, um, yeah. your whole life is kind of put on hold. All your vacations, all your trips you want to do, all your, um, you know, p hanging out with your friends and all the stuff you miss, everything is put on hold till later, including relationships, including having kids. I would say yeah. like most people that I see uh, that are doctors are having kids at the age of like 30 plus for sure. Like 32, 33. We had a yeah. couple that did have them through residency. Um, even in medical school, I think we had a, um, a one person in my class, um, might've been more, um, but it does happen. But I think typically what you see is I'm seeing my attendings now, uh, starting families and they're like 35, 36. So yeah, I think I can, even like on my peds rotation, sometimes I'll literally be like, helping a mom who's like 22 sometimes even like 19 but like yeah. even 22 24 and i'll just be like wow i'm not even close to that or like they'll be like oh do you have kids and like i realize i have to stop acting like a kid and be like oh no not at all i'm too young because actually i'm at that age where i could just say no like it's not weird to not have kids now at 24 yeah, yeah. so right. i can't be like oh no i'm too young it's now just like no like I have to like change my connotation. Yeah, especially in uh, the De I'll say Desi uh, community, uh, it's it gets to be old. You get to be considered very old. Like um, most, I would even say guys are getting married at like in the Desi community, like twenty five. Girls twenty five ish, I think, is when you start uh, start getting badgered. I mean, you see it all over the place when you see these um, Indian YouTubers and stuff making skits, and their you know their rationale is they want to focus on their business, they want to focus on what they're doing, and that's kind of what you're doing in as a doctor as well you're focused so you don't get to start that family till later um, yeah i also think you just have to be like i said going back to security you have to be really secure because not only are you starting everything later and making those deeper connections adventures everything's on hold mm -hmm. like even for step one like you are pretty much probably not going to see that person for like months like if, yeah. unless you are very advanced in your relationship and like you're living with them or something which i know some couples do that like they live with each other and so even their home right. life is together but if you're like young and you're trying to like take it the nice slow route like it's going to be difficult because like step one is going to come and put a wedge in your relationship for three months probably you know it's just going to be a lot of holds yeah. and pauses instead of the normal slow course so that's why i think it is uh, quite a big deal if you do find somebody within your same professional space i think i mentioned it before um or it might have been on a different video that i did that a lot of doctors end up working with or meeting somebody and going uh, connecting with somebody that's a doctor or a nurse or something of that that nature um, because they just understand each other and on the same page they have similar schedules so yeah. without that yeah i also know a lot of relationships that broke up because like the partner was not in med school and like maybe it was also long distance so they they wanted a conversation every day and like i know a lot especially when like i probably know at least seven or eight couples like first year when i started that broke up because once that individual started anatomy or something like the med school mm. student started anatomy it's like i can't call you every day and yep. so it's nice in a way because the other person's going to have more time if they're not in medicine, but also they're not going to understand you at all. Yeah, I think a lot of people do also come into med school already married or engaged mm, that's or a in a long distance relationship. Um, and I, I don't know how the long distance relationships work. Uh, that mm -hmm. must be really difficult. Um, but like the marriages and the engagements, they work actually really well. So oh, I think really? if you can find someone before medical school and then either marry or uh, get engaged i think that's like the most optimal way because you don't have to grow and like get to know each other and do that's all that true. stuff while in med school which is i think the hardest part i think if you're already married when you get into medical school maintaining that relationship is not as hard as like growing a new one and meeting a new person or people if you're on these apps like meeting people left and right i think getting to make a new relationship in med school is the hard part I think it depends also, though, if you have somebody uh, that you had a relationship with that. But if you have like a, if you have like three kids also and you're oh, married, yeah, that's, that makes that's a difference. just uh, another yeah. level. And, and if you have somebody that's supporting you going through medical school, you know, that's that's good. But one of the things to note is that the doctor divorce rate is actually quite high. Uh, among certain specialties like ER, the divorce rate even goes up higher. Um, a lot of the contributing factors 
uh, are actually illegitimate relationships, like uh, uh, cheating on your spouse is actually a pretty big deal, especially if you look at the numbers, you can look at the ER uh, statistics. I have here, 24% uh, of physician respondents have uh, become divorced um, compared to some of these other, a lot of these healthcare specialties, even dentists and stuff like that, they have high divorce rates um, compared to other specialties. That's an interesting thing. So uh, I get that point if you have a very solid relationship, but I would say medical school not only is a breaker of relationships in terms of the friendships, but can also destroy your um, marital status and relationship and all that stuff with so many different factors. Like I said, if you meet somebody throughout your profession that vibes with you um, and, and is under more understanding of you and you guys are in the same field and then you had a prior relationship where you're not that deeply invested, like three kids and stuff like that, it's going to be a strain on your relationship for sure. Something to always take into account when you go yeah, into Yeah, but fields. I actually have an, a different hypothesis about the... Oh, Oh, the divorce divorces, rate? which might be a little controversial. Okay. I Let's think that the people getting into med school is very controversial, but I, I stand by it. Okay. They are a little more wonky <laughs> in the mental department. That's true. Like oh, they're a little oh. more narcissistic. They're oh, a little yes, more, yes, yes. Oh, uh, they can be more selfish. So I mm. don't deny, I, uh, I actually am 100% sure that uh that is it's one of the things of that contributes to cheating yeah oh for sure no data to yeah. support this unless you know we can look into no it data well, again well, this is non type a person but this is the my data, strong hypothesis the data that does support you though is you do see more narcissistic personality disorder you do see more type a personality disorders that has been documented in um in studies showing who gets into medicine well i've always said like from day negative of even getting into medical school like it's so frustrating that medicine has become this selfish career like you mm. have to be selfish in a way and it's hard for that's why there is a lot of depression and there is a lot of frustration in med school if you are more of the stable valuing family type person it's more challenging because mm. think about it it's one of those careers which is literally going to you send in an application and you're ready to pack your bags wherever you get told to go and then mm. it's again like that for residency it's again like that for fellowship it's again and again like dragging you thousands of miles away from your family so yes. like it's just such a weird um, kind of idea, but it's very normalized now, but it is a selfish thing. Like I didn't want to move away from home, like at all. And it was upsetting. I don't like it, but it's a selfish career. You have to literally like throw away, like seeing your family all the time and then move away and just pretty much barely talk to them. Like that's yeah. just a selfish yeah. career. But in addition, I think they're also selecting for that. If hmm. there's two pre-meds and one is like the straight and narrow doing things like focusing on themselves and then there's another person who is really good in three years but in a fourth year they get bad grades or worse grades and they they go and take care of like their dying grandpa they're going to pick the person who has more publications more um like grades and stuff because there's such a strong emphasis on that like what's the gpa at mayo the oh, average gpa Really high, like 3.9 really something high. it's like they're not the toughest like, school statistically to get into for the country um the like they're chapter. not gonna pick the nice chap that got bad grades for a legitimately like noble reason you know what i mean but i think of they're course trying they, they're, they're trying but away. they're not succeeding they're, they're trying but they're not <laughs> succeeding but i do think in certain ways interviewing i've realized just from kind of being i don't know more inquisitive about the interview process recently mm -hmm. just i realized that i think that's the purpose of interviews and surprisingly i never thought i was just like what do interviews do like what is the mm -hmm. purpose of them but mm -hmm. truly you can actually gauge if somebody is listening to social cues like the interviewer is trying to move on from the subject or if somebody is trying if the interviewer is trying to kind of weed out something like you can definitely get a lot of inherent social cues and kind of detect some narcissism within an mm -hmm. interview as well but i think well, what they definitely saying is, missed the mark yeah. on the stories we've covered of the lady who said she wanted to like uh give the wrong medicine to Jews and kill yeah. them. Oh, and then yeah. we have and the, then other the video person the... like uh, in the Uber, like th being yeah. so d disrespectful to Uber drivers. Like, and then the, the story yeah. Herman covered of the ER doctor uh, being very PA, racist, yeah. Uh, yeah. PA. It's like the application process, if all these stories are coming out left and right, there's obviously yeah some kind no, of i agree issue. i agree there's an issue for sure because i think a lot of these guys are valuing things that might seem positive at first but are actually 
um, falling into the categories of being a little too narcissistic, such as when you have somebody that's very aggressive uh, with their uh, personality. I've seen it in interviews or really, really aggressive. They want to put forward their stuff and um, they, you know, they want to tote how great they are. That can also be, it's just sometimes the interviewer fails to pick up on the signs that are that are showing that the individual is a little too overboard in terms of that type A personality, a little too lacking empathy, a little too much um, in it for the wrong reasons. It can be hard to pick that up because you do want the best candidate, the one that puts themselves forward. And a lot of the times those individuals at the same time are ones that are very um, deceptive with the way that they get uh, present themselves and they get that kind of stuff gets overlooked and falls through the cracks. And then you get Yeah. And again, I just want to clarify my point. I don't think, I don't even think the majority of med students are like this, but I think there's a higher proportion uh, relative of like, to other yeah. fields. Yeah, like basically what I'm saying is don't be surprised if you get in a relationship in med school and the person ends up being a little more selfish than you would like and a little less, uh, uh, gives a little less attention to you and a little more attention I to their research paper. I think that's a very good point because I yes. think I've seen that left and right is for sure, for sure, for sure. If, especially guys, I don't know if this is for girls necessarily, <laughs> but I've definitely felt like guys are very like, Oh, about career. themselves, my, about their career. Like, I need to get my stuff settled down. I need to do this. Oh, yeah, she'll be around. Like, mm. or I'll find someone else. Like, I need to get my pubs match into my specialty. Like, they're very like goal oriented, but so much to the point they don't know their priorities. Yeah, yeah, and I would be, I would caution that as well. For the most part, and again, anecdotally, uh, <laughs> females I've interacted with. Uh, can go either way. You can have them fall into that category, but less likely, uh, comp- again, anecdotal personal evidence, I haven't really seen um, on that on my end uh, with females, but I personally have seen it with guys. Where it is all about them. It is all about their career. It is all about um, where they're going in life. So again, just a disclaimer, we're not saying all said med anecdotal. students, yeah. uh, but just there's probably a higher proportion of that yeah. uh, based on all the accounts that I've heard. Shaman, do you but fall generally- into that category? Oh. No, no, I'm probably the nicest, most selfless person. <laughs> honestly, probably. Aside from that, that's probably the <laughs> most boastful. But I think, honestly, time. now that we're getting into the point, um, I definitely think girls in medicine are a lot better at balancing things than guys hmm. in medicine. Hmm, hmm. Like, period. Explain, explain. <laughs> explain. I can't elaborate more than that. I just think they are. Uh, I just yeah. feel like everyone that I've anecdotally, like, my my friends that I know anecdotally are just better at balancing like or priorities. is it that they give you that narrative no when they're no all... it's fact based all right huh. okay should we move on to the next Let's topic move on here? to the next topic <laughs>